Hello, my name is Jim Muncy with Projectech. This presentation will show you how to create a simple job plan. A job plan is a template stored in a library within Maximo that can be applied to a PM, route, or work order. All of the information from the job plan is then copied directly to the work order. This saves a great deal of time when planning your work. In this presentation, we will create a basic job plan and assign it to a work order. We'll click on Go To, down to the Planning Module, and slide across to Job Plans. To begin a new job plan, we'll click on the New Record button on top. And you must give the job plan a unique job plan identifier. And tap over to the Description field. We'll give it a basic description. Now the organization and site fields are not required. What these will do, if you leave them blank, then anyone in your entire instance of Maximo can use a job plan. If you enter an organization, then only people within that organization can use a job plan. If I enter an organization and a site, then only people in that specific site within that organization can use a job plan. For this example, though, we'll go ahead and put a site value in here. I'll just type Bedford into my site and tab out, and it pulls my organization in there automatically. Now, there are a lot of fields in the job plan application. We're going to make this a simple job plan. Under Responsibility, it's not recommended to enter a name in a job plan because this is a template that can be used on many different work orders. Also, it's what we refer to as master data. If I put a name in here for lead or supervisor and that individual leaves a company and I have a thousand job plan records with that name on it, it's very difficult to change all those names to some other different name. So we recommend not using names at all, uh, but it is a good idea to put a crew or a work group or an owner group value here. Groups do not change the way people do. So if I put a group there, a group will probably be around for a long time. So I'm going to use a crew value and type in crew1 and tab out. Now the next thing to fill out is my job plan task. This is what tells the person what to do for this specific job. So to begin adding my task, I'll click on the new row button to the right. And the tasks are automatically numbered for you from, in a sequence of 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, and so on. So for task 10, I'm going to enter a value. Isolate compressor. I can also always add more information if I needed to. I can click on this long description button to the right and enter much more detailed information for that task, such as follow all plant safety precautions. This is a very large text field. You can put a lot of information into it. And it's completely optional. I'm going to click on the OK button to close that. And you notice that whenever you add a long description, the button tends to turn to an orange shade that tells you there's information within there. So that's our first task. We'll add a second task now by clicking the new row button. And there's task 20. Task 20 will say replace belt. And add a third task. We'll click new row again. And we'll indicate uh, replace gasket. And we'll do one more task. We'll hit new row again. Put in here retest. Now there's no limit to how many tasks you can put on a job plan. I'm just going to leave it at four here because it's a simple job plan. I've seen as many as 400 tasks on a job plan. To conserve uh, screen space here, we'll click the orange detail button to the left and close up that task detail. With our task completed, our next step is to add our labor in the labor sub tab. To do that, we'll click the new row button. To add our labor in here, it's not recommended to add a name as we talked about before. It's best to add a craft code. So I'm going to add a craft code in here. Select value. Now I'm going to find a mechanic. So I'll click in the craft field up here in my filter. Type in M-E-C-H and filter for a mechanic. Now I want to point out that this list contains both internal labor and external labor. And I can tell because the labor codes that are associated to a vendor are normally always external labor. And if you have a contract number to the right over here, that indicates there's a labor contract in effect for that particular craft. I'm going to pick on a uh, mechanic. Now, I could assign a different labor to each task if it's for a complex job plan, which is not. So I'm just going to leave the task field blank. I'm going to put one mechanic on here. It defaults to quantity of one. I can always change it if I wanted more than one mechanic. And the hours, I'm going to give it uh, an estimated number of hours for this job. I'm going to type in four for hours. So I need one mechanic for four hours. Now let's go to my material sub tab. So I'm going to click on the select spare parts button. I can enter a value in here for the asset that search for spare parts. So if I know what asset this I'm running this job plan for, I'll just type the value in here 
and click the refine button and that filters out my entire inventory to show me only those spare parts listed for that asset that makes it much easier to find your spare parts that way so I'm going to check the V-belt and we'll check the gasket as well and click OK and defaults to quantity of one we can change it if need be but we'll leave it at one so we've entered our labor materials I'm going to click on the save button on top now one more good thing to do is click on my work assets tab and enter the locations assets or items that this job plan would pertain to to do that I click the new row button enter my asset save now I can add as many assets or locations as I need to to show what this job plan goes to this makes it much easier later on when you're assigning this job plan to say a work order it will automatically filter the job plan library for only those job plans that are on the asset for your work order it makes it easier to find your job plans that way with that done let's go back to my job plans tab and I think we're just about finished last thing to do is activate the job plan we must change the status from draft to active to do that we'll click on the status change button on top we'll select the new status of active click the OK button now our job plan is completed to show you how this job plan actually works we're going to create a a work order and add the job plan to the work order so to do that we're going to click on the go to button go down to work orders and work order tracking and we'll click the new work order button on top we'll fill out our basic information for our work order I'll give it a description and we'll put our asset in there it automatically copies other information in there such as my GL account now we'll go to work type we'll select CM for corrective maintenance now we'll go to my job plan field and I click the arrow for the job plan and you'll notice that the the select value box automatically filters the job plan library for only job plans that pertain to that specific asset this makes it much easier to find your job plan now if I wanted to use a different job plan I could always uncheck the buttons up here click refresh and I can see my entire job plan, job plan library nothing restricts me from using some other job plan but this just makes it easier so I'm going to select my job plan we just created and we've added job plan to our work order click the save button now we'll take a look at our work plan once you copy a job plan to a work order it becomes what's called a work plan the work plan is identical to my job plan it's got the exact same task pull from my job plan my labor my materials everything pulls right from the job plan the difference is that once it becomes a work plan it is fully editable so I could actually modify this work plan add more materials to it add more labor change my task out any change I want to make I can make to it and that only affects that specific work order it will not affect your job plan template so you can use the same job plan template over and over again but by putting a job plan to the work order and edit editing it there it makes your job as a planner much easier this concludes this presentation on creating a basic job plan please visit us at www.projecttech.com to see our other training videos and if you have any questions please contact us thank you